Hello and welcome back to this Global Health YouTube channel. My name is Greg Moore. In the last video, we took a look at how to get funding for global health projects. And we really looked at the structure of funding organizations and the process, basically the funding cycle. Today, I'm gonna to take you through an actual funding application. So I'm gonna write a funding application and do a screen recording of that process. What I'm wanting to convey here is the process of writing a grant application. Now I'm gonna fast forward through some of the text input, et cetera, et cetera, just to make this video a little bit shorter. But what I'm wanting you to take note of is the fact that this isn't a difficult process and doesn't take very long. So I don't want you to be nervous about putting together your own grant application. Okay, that's it, let's jump right in. Okay, so here we are sitting at my computer and I'm gonna basically put together a grant application. Uh, well, this will just be a concept note because that's what, the, what this particular funder is asking for. And I'll, as I do it, I'll talk you through what it is that I'm doing, what I'm thinking and why it is that I'm doing it. So we'll start off. The first thing that of course you need to do is put a heading. So let's go. Okay, so the heading in this case is concept note, cost comparison of outpatients versus inpatient care of patients being treated for mental illness. Now, there's basically four or five headings that you need to hit in a grant application or a concept note. What the funder needs is firstly, a little bit of background, not too much, but you need to put them in the picture. Secondly, they need to know what it is that you're going to accomplish, right? So your outputs or your goals or your vision, or I don't really mind what word you use to describe that, but what it is you're gonna accomplish. Then you need to describe what it is that you're gonna to do to reach that goal. And finally, you need to talk about what it's gonna cost and how you're gonna spend the money. So that's really the essence of a funding application. Now, most of the details that's gonna go into these various headings won't be of particular interest to you unless you're particularly interested in mental health. So I'm just gonna slot that stuff in and we'll jump right into the activities in the budget because that's the area that people find most difficult and I think that's the area we need to focus on. So. When we put together the activities, I like to use what's called a Gantt chart because a Gantt chart lists along the left-hand side, what it is that you're gonna do, more or less in the order that you're gonna do it, and then it's done in a kind of a spreadsheet so that people can see how long and at what points in time the various activities will take place. In the left-hand column, I'm gonna put the various activities that I think we're gonna to need to do in order to accomplish our outputs and our goals. Most projects will have a much more extensive Gantt chart. This is quite a small grant I'm going for. It's a small project, so there's just a few things that we're gonna do, so let's have a look. And we're just gonna put headings here, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And next, we're gonna fill these boxes in just in terms of where it is that the various activities are gonna take place. And I'm gonna stick this Gantt chart straight into my concept notes. I'm just gonna cut and paste the thing in. The next heading is budget. And this is extremely important because this tells the funder that you've thought about what things are gonna cost and you've thought about how it is that you're gonna spend the money. So before we even start talking about what different things are gonna cost, let's again put together a list of what needs to be done. But now we're gonna be putting that list together thinking through where it is that we're gonna be spending money. Now for each of these cost buckets, we're not gonna be putting in a dollar amount at this point. What we wanna do is we wanna think through how the unit costs associated with each of these line items is distributed over the four quarters. So we're just gonna put a one, a two, a three, et cetera, et cetera, where we think the spending will happen. Okay, now things start to get interesting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy of that table. We're gonna add in a couple of extra columns. Now we're gonna put in these extra headings. The first heading will be category. Next will be amount. And at the end, we're gonna have a total. Now costs can be categorized in numerous different ways. You can have variable costs and fixed costs. You can have capital expenditures and operational costs. You can have direct costs and indirect costs. It doesn't really matter how you phrase it so long as what you put together is clear and easy to understand by the person looking at your budget. So I'm just gonna put a few categories in. So our starting point is to think through what the unit cost for any one of these items would be. Now comes a little bit of the wizardry of Excel and numbers. So what we wanna do is go to our first box and we wanna say that box is equal to the unit amount times by how many times that unit will be spent in quarter one. Now, if you're gonna work with much larger budgets, you don't wanna be sticking that formula in in every single cell. What you want to be able to do is drag the formula into a range of cells and have them fill themselves in for you. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna quickly show you how to do that. You'll notice that the number in this cell now is a function of what was in that cell there and what was in the cell over here. If we just drag the formula as it is across and down, it's gonna move not only the formula, but it's gonna move the reference points from which, to which the formula is pointing. So as you move down, it's gonna be looking at the cell underneath 
here and the cell underneath there. And as you move across, it's going to look at the cell to the right here and to the cell to, and, 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 and it's going to look to the cell to the right here. But we don't want it to do that. As we move down and across, we're happy for this blue block to move down, but we don't want it to move across, right? Because we don't want the reference point to start being blank cells. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on down here and it says preserve column. Click on preserve column and say yes. Now, if we drag the formula down and across, the formula has been copied without any errors. If you're working in Microsoft Excel and you don't have the facility of a drop down menu where you say preserve column, all you need to do is you need to go into the formula itself, find the column that you're not wanting to be shifted around and put a dollar sign in front of it. Next, we'll produce some totals. So what we're left with is a spreadsheet that's essentially a budget and it's telling us in each quarter what the total amount that'll be spent and by each cost category or cost line item what the total amounts will be for the entire project. So what we might want to do is have some graphics that represent this information so that it's easier to digest. And there we have a distribution of the spending by quarter across the project from quarter one to quarter four. And finally there's something that we can do quite interesting in terms of summarizing this budget even further. We can ask Numbers or Excel to summarize the totals by the different categories of spending. Now to fill this in, we're going to use a function within numbers, and it's exactly the same in Excel, called SUMIF. If you've got a large budget, you need to be able to use these sorts of functions. So let me just walk you through it. Essentially, what we're wanting the spreadsheet to do is we want it to look at this column and say, look for that word in this column, anywhere that it finds it, and where it finds it, to go along here and add up any of the numbers here that are associated with what it found over there. Firstly, start with equals, sum if, right, that's the function, open brackets, right, so we're saying if it looks in there and finds that, it needs to add the associate number from there. Now again, we want to just drag this formula down, and we could just do the formula again and again because we've only got to do it three times this time, but you may have a bigger spreadsheet with a more complex budget, so you need to be able to drag the formula and have it done automatically. So if we're going to drag this formula, we don't, we don't mind if the A2, this orange thing, gets dragged down, that, that's appropriate. But we want the boxes that they, it looks in, the blue box and the purple box, to stay where they are. So we want to preserve the start and end of that row. And we want to preserve the start and end of that row. And in Excel, you would do it by sticking a dollar sign in. Now we drag the formula down, and we've got the numbers in the appropriate boxes. Now we can create a little pie chart represent this data and we can stick it into our application form. So this is basically the first draft of my concept note. Let's quickly take a look at what it looks like. We've got the heading at the top, background, objectives, outputs, activities in the form of a Gantt chart. Go to the next page, we've got our budget. The budget is represented in a little graph and we've got spending by category. And that's more or less enough to send as a concept note. You're basically saying this is what I'm going to do, this is what, what I'm going to do will accomplish and this is what it's going to cost. What do you think? And just to let you know, I, this is a real concept note. My intention really is to send this to the funder and hopefully I'll get funding for it. The next step for me will be to take this concept note and circulate it to people that I know and that I trust that can give me good feedback. They'll make some suggestions, I'll make a revision and when I'm happy with the draft that I can send to the funder, I'll send it in. It's a concept note, so off the back of this concept note, they either will or will not ask me to submit a more detailed application. So I hope you found this video useful. Remember there are other videos on our YouTube channel, so go there, watch the videos, click on the like button, make comments and subscribe if you haven't. Speak to you soon, take care.